this is applicable even today my dear brothers and sisters if you don't have it church to celebrate holy mass properly and you are building your own houses beautifying houses not even spending even a single penny to build a church for us to celebrate holy mass a beautiful church a beautiful altar beautiful clothes for the church to celebrate the holy mass then it will be a curse it will be a block for us our financial area will be blocked when you offer when you bring consecrate your home consecrate your job consecrate your finance consecrate your family that means you are returning to god god says you are not giving your tithe and offerings therefore is a sign that you are robbing god because what belongs to god you have to give to god some people tithe means 10 10 percentage of income supposed to be given to god so they think 10 percentage is belonging to god and 90 percentage belongs to them that is not true the 100 percentage belongs to god out of it god takes only 10 percentage and 90 percentage is entrusted to you that's how we should think about our finance and income many a time we have a misunderstanding 10 percentage belongs to god 90 is mine no so from this passage itself we know jesus christ is god himself because here about jesus the prophecy says i sent messenger messenger is john the baptist before to prepare the way before me that means after john the baptist who is going to come god himself Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. God doesn't change my dear brothers and sisters based on our performance. Don't ever think God can change. God changes based on our performance. If we perform well, God is happy with us. If we don't perform well, God is angry with us. That is not our God. God is not human being like to behave as we behave. God is unchangeable. He is same. Is our God and all we see our grace, our grace is our God. Future, he says, I'm sending my messenger, Malachi. So Malachi is the meaning, the the Greek word. or a hebrew word that is used for my messenger praise the lord praise and that's how the word that name malachi came because the other nobody knows the other no one knows the name of the other there is a prophet and but whose name is not known therefore later they gave the name malachi from this word my messenger so and he says he in fact who is this my messenger whom god is going to send in fact it's a prophecy prophesy he was prophesying about the future it's a prophecy about future later we can know from the new testament especially gospel of matthew chapter 11 verse 10 we read like this gospel of matthew chapter 11 verse 10 jesus himself acknowledged that who is this messenger this is the one about whom it is written let's read verse 8 onwards What then did you go out to see someone dressed in soft robes so when Jesus was speaking about John the Baptist Jesus said what then did you go out to see someone dressed in soft robes look those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces was nine what then did you go out to see a prophet yes i tell you more than a prophet This is the one about whom it is written see i am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you This is a quotation from Malachi Jesus himself is quoting passages quotation from Malachi that is why the church fathers agreed that book of Malachi is an authentic book and therefore they added in the old testament So that's how we Jesus is quoting from different books in the Old Testament that's how the church has come to conclusion these are authentic books sacred books because Jesus himself is quoting it 
so he says book of malachi chapter 3 verse 1 see i'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me now it's very important G- the lord god says i'm sending a prophet a messenger to prepare the way before me he didn't say i'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before another prophet so from this passage itself we know jesus christ is god himself because here about jesus the prophecy says i sent messenger messenger is john the baptist before to prepare the way before me that means after john the baptist who is going to come god himself and therefore jesus he is god even from the old testament prophecies it is god who himself comes and comes in for, comes to the human being not just a prophet he is 100% prophetic duty prophet 100% god 100% human being praise the lord see i am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me and the lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple so the lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple is about jesus christ first he said the messenger will be sent before me that is god and this lord will come to the temple suddenly unexpected way the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight indeed he is coming says the lord of first indeed he is coming you know it's book of malachi chapter 3 and one more chapter the old testament is over then the new testament that means the book of malachi the last book of the old testament he is saying the the messenger the lord is coming the messenger will come first and the lord himself will come and he is coming indeed he is coming praise the lord see how connected the whole old testament and new testament how beautiful it is and was to uh, and uh, but who can endure the day of his coming now here in fact there is a two advent two coming is mentioned the first one is the first coming of the mess- the lord and there is also a second coming is also mentioned here it is about second coming but who can endure the day of his coming who can stand when he appears this is about the second coming the last judgment second coming of jesus for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap god will come like a refiner's fire to purify praise the lord and verse 3 we read like this he will sit as a refiner purifier of silver he will purify the descendants of levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the lord in righteousness the lord says he will purify the priesthood until then only levi priesthood <coughs> from then jesus the new the the true god the, the lord who is coming to this world he will purify the levites and he will make new priesthood and these priesthood these priest they will present offerings to the lord in righteousness a new offering will be taking place in the new era the new testament so prophecy about a new priesthood not the priesthood like levi's priesthood in the old testament but the new descent new priesthood is mentioned prophesied in this passage praise the lord was for can you read was for we read like this then the offering of juda and jerusalem will be pleasing to the lord as in the days of old as in former years just like in the former years means before the before before the sins just like the former years all the offerings will be so pleasing to god so this this is about mentioning about the eucharist as i told you the other day malachi is known as the prophet of the eucharist and he is the one so strongly spoke about the new offering the new mass the holy mass the eucharist that is going to be offered in every corner and every nation praise the lord and he's mentioning that verse 5 then i will draw near to you for judgment 
repeat after me then i will draw near to you for judgment then, then i will draw, draw near, near to you for judgment, judgment. in fact this is the second coming the first one until now what i was speaking about that is the first coming of jesus that is about what jesus is going to establish and from this point onwards is the second coming of jesus is mentioned then i will draw near to you for judgment then i will draw near to you for judgment i will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers i will be swift to bear witness against the adulterers against the adulterers against those who swear falsely against those who swear falsely against those who oppress the hired ones against those who oppress the hired ones let's read verse 6 for i the lord for i the lord do not change do not change therefore therefore you children of jacob you children of jacob have not perished have not perished praise the lord praise the lord the lord says you are un- you are always changing sometimes good sometimes good not good sometimes holy sometimes unholy sometimes be- be- obey god sometimes disobey god but god said i am not like you If I was not I was like you I would have already destroyed you but I always compassionate yesterday and will be compassionate today and I will be compassionate tomorrow I am not changing my dear brothers and sisters we cannot change god because god doesn't need to change change comes when there is weakness only immortal human beings will change today we have one attitude tomorrow another attitude God is same yesterday today tomorrow God will never change and God doesn't need to change Sometimes you know some many people have a misunderstanding we can change God okay today we God is happy tomorrow God is not happy when you know so now I am offering holy masses holy masses after all, now God is changed God changed his mind you know sometimes when we read the bible we say god changed his mind and blessed them initially he wanted to kill all of them but suddenly god changed his mind and blessed them it is not god who is changing we are changing therefore the result is different god is always same we are changing praise the lord praise the lord so in order to under- make you understand this for example when cain committed sin Cain said uh, you know God said you know you have to be very careful the sin is lurking at the door its desire is for you you have to master it otherwise you will be in trouble god want cain but later god it cain disobeyed god and committed the murder killed his brother then god came and said cain because of this sin the land is cursed and the blood he is crying out to me and therefore everywhere wherever you go you will be attacked people will attack you stone at you everyone will hurt you you will be a wanderer fugitive on this earth this is what god said we call it god punished him in fact it is not a punishment god was telling him what was going to happen to him then suddenly he repented he said i'm so sorry i'm really sorry and he started crying then suddenly god said you will be blessed you will be blessed now if anyone touch you they will be in problem and god is blessing him looks like god is changing him you know god is changing himself in in fact god is the same god said now you are in sin this, therefore this will happen suddenly he repented and said i'm so sorry then god said now since you repented this is what is going to happen god is same we are the ones who are changing when we are in sin these consequences will happen god is reminding us we call it punishment in fact it is not punishment it is the consequence of our own sins when we repent no more consequence we are saved doesn't mean god is blessing us it is not a blessing blessing is already given to us 2000 years ago on mount calvary when you are changed you will receive it when you are not changed you won't receive it and we call it punishment when we are changed we receive it we call it blessing praise the lord praise the lord so the blessing and the curse and punishment everything is in our in our hand is not god who has to do it god will never change he is same he has only one nature i love you i have mercy and compassion for you i will never reject you anyone 
God loves me 100%, God loves Mother Teresa 100%, God loves you 100%, God loves Bin Laden, Hitler, Stalin, everybody 100%. God's love for everyone is 100%. If I am changed and if I am a repenting heart, I will go to heaven. If I am not repenting, committing in sin, I will be in hell. Even if I am in the hell, God loves me. God loves Hitler. But he decided to reject the love of God and go to hell. We don't know where he is, but at least from the result we know, this may, this may happen. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is we who decide. That is why Bible says, I the Lord do not change. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For I the Lord do not change. Repeat after me. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, therefore you, all children of Jacob, all children of Jacob, have not perished. Have not perished. I'm not changing. That's why you are still alive. If I am a changing person like you, when I was angry, I would have destroyed you all of you. When I'm happy, I will create you. And again, when I'm angry, I will destroy you. But God is same always. Thank God. That's why we at least we are surviving now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Therefore, instead of trying to change God, let us try to change ourselves. Then the blessings will come. Sometimes people think, you know, I'm saying rosary, rosary, rosary. After saying so many rosaries, now God is so happy with me. Even if you don't say any prayer, still God is happy with you. But you will not experience the happiness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even if we are the worst sinners, still God loves us. God loves us. In Jesus Christ, God is pleased with us. Through his offerings, God is pleased with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we need to make sure that we receive this happiness and joy which God is pouring out upon you. All the blessings which God wants to give you is just above your head. The moment you change, the blessing will come to you. The blessing is already released. The floodgates of heaven is already opened. That is why when Jesus died, the curtain is torn apart from both sides and the heaven is opened. The sanctuary is open for the public. Nothing is hidden anymore. Everything is released. Now, if we repent and believe in Jesus, all the blessing is mine. When the prodigal son's elder son said, Father, you did not give me one small young God. Then father said, my dear son, what do you say? All what is mine is yours. Should I give you one by one? One young God, one rat, one cat. Everything what I have is yours. Everything is open for you. Don't, you don't need to try to please me and take one by one everything. Everything is given to you. All what is mine is yours. The heaven is yours, my dear brothers and sisters. Up to you to decide whether to go to heaven or hell. Many people go to hell because that, they, that's what they choose. It's not what God wants to send them. There is no point in blaming God for what, all the consequences of our own life. If we change, we'll experience it. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7, we read like this. God said to Cain, what did God say? God said to Cain, we read Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. If you do well, if you do well, will you not be accepted? Will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you. Its desire is for you. But you must master it. But you must master it. No, there is something very special. Bible doesn't say if you do well, Will you not be accepted? If you don't do well, you will be rejected. Bible doesn't say. If you do well, you will receive the blessings from God. If you don't do well, there is somebody else is waiting to catch you. That means the punishment, so-called punishment is not from God. It is from somebody else who is waiting at the door. Many people think, God is punishing. God doesn't punish anybody. God is always same. It is the one who is waiting at the door 
Wait, the sin is lurking at the door. His desire is for you. But you must master it. Otherwise, he will come and take control of your family. Destroy your family. If you do well, you will be accepted. If you don't do well, still I accept. But the problem is, there is somebody else who comes to your home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God doesn't change, my dear brothers and sisters, based on our performance. Don't ever think God can change. God changes based on our performance. If we perform well, God is happy with us. If we don't perform well, God is angry with us. That is not our God. God is not human being. Like to behave as we behave. God is unchangeable. He's same. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Let's all read verse 6. For the Lord do not change. Therefore you, O children of God, Jacob, have not perished. Verse 7. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have turned aside from my statutes. Ever since the day of your ancestors, you have turned aside from my statutes. And have not kept them. And have not kept them. Return to me. Return to me. I will return to you. And I will return to you. Says the Lord of hosts. Says the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Return to me. I will return to you. The Lord says, return to me. God is asking everyone to return. Then people say, how shall we return? How to come back? How to come? We all want to come back. How to come back? Then the Lord is telling them how to come back. You know, will anyone rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, you know, when, when people ask how to come back to you, the Lord is explaining to them how to come back. How? Will anyone rob God? You are robbing God. Then they said, how are we robbing you? Then the Lord said, you are not giving your tithe and offering, offerings. What belongs to God, you are not giving it. You are not giving the best for God. Not by not giving the best, you are not returning to me. So what does it mean? If you are giving your tithe and offering, that means it's a sign that you are returning to God. When you offer, when you bring, consecrate your home, consecrate your job, consecrate your finance, consecrate your family, that means you are returning to God. God says, you are not giving your tithe and offerings. Therefore, it's a sign that you are robbing God. Because what belongs to God, you have to give to God. Some people, tithe means 10, 10 percentage of income. Supposed to be given to God. So they think 10 percentage is belonging to God. And 90 percentage belongs to them. That is not true. The hundred percentage belongs to God. Out of which, God takes only ten percentage and ninety percentage is entrusted to you. That's how we should think about our finance and income. Many a time we have a misunderstanding. Ten percentage belongs to God, ninety is mine. No. Hundred is God's hundred percentage of all your incomes belong to God. Out of which God takes only a little bit and then he gives you the majority and say behave properly. Use it properly. That's all. That is what we call tithe. Many a time we have a misunderstanding. We claim the 90 and we just say only 10 belongs to God. That is not true. That is why the 90 becomes useless. The 90 percentage we have is wasted. 90 percentage doesn't become successful because we think it's mine. It's ours. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So God says, by not giving the tithe and offering, you're robbing me because it's all 100 percentage is mine and you're taking everything away from me. And you, that means you are robbing me. Verse 9. You are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me. Whole nation of you. The Lord is strictly telling Israelites. Because the temple is fallen down. People are enjoying with the, all the money and power positions. But they are not doing anything to build up the temple. 
this is applicable even today my dear brothers and sisters if you don't have it church to celebrate holy mass properly and you are building your own houses beautifying houses not even spending even a single penny to build a church for us to celebrate holy mass a beautiful church a beautiful altar beautiful clothes for the church to celebrate the holy mass then it will be a curse it will be a block for us our financial area will be blocked it's our duty to take care of our church give the best for our church as in whatever way possible in maximum capacity that we have make sure that you go to your parish church and see whether they have the the best chalices the best patent the best books the best cloth and best holy things that is used for the holy mass is our duty otherwise we are robbing god praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus my dear brothers and sisters we will learn more about these of uh, tomorrow let's close our eyes let's close our eyes and pray together offering all the intentions on this altar and pray and offer our parishes and parish churches and all the churches being closed down all the churches being sold out and made turned into liquor shops let's pray for all the people of god in those parishes let no curse come upon them let them all be blessed let's pray blessing together